Hello and welcome to the Alexander G. Ruthven Exhibit of Natural History here at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Let's explore the Evolution of Whales exhibit on the fourth floor of the museum. Did you know that over 80 living species exist are classified as cetacean? Not only does this group include whales, but also dolphins and porpoises. There did not used to be a lot of fossil evidence to explain the evolution of whales, but more recent discoveries have helped scientists understand the whale evolution process. Through the discovery of fossils, evidence exists that whales were first land animals rather than the aquatic animals they are today. Their legs became fins and other adaptions took place until they could survive in water. Believe it or not, there is heavy evidence that whales are mammals that were once terrestrial but have evolved into marine animals. Surprisingly, even though modern whales live in the water and can never live on land, and may even look like giant fish, they are instead considered mammals, not fish. Therefore, it is interesting because mammals originated on land, not in water. They are considered mammals because they are warm-blooded, have small hairs on their bodies, they give live birth, not by eggs, and they inhale air through their lungs instead of getting oxygen through their gills. All whales and dolphins are part of the order known as cetacea. Modern whales are highly adapted for life underwater. In general, modern whales have unique ears that allow them to have impeccable hearing underwater. They don't have legs, but instead have dorsal fins and horizontal flukes on their tails. Their forelimbs work as flippers, and they have a very small pelvis and hind limbs. They are able to give birth in the water. Whales also have highly compressed neck vertebrae. They have elongated skull bones and nostrils on the top of their heads, which is called a blowhole. Modern whales are divided into two groups. Both groups, however, come from a common ancestor. The first group are called baleen whales. They have comb-like plates that act as a strainer. These filaments, called baleen, hang from the roof of their mouths and catch food from seawater. In other words, they lack teeth as adults. They can sing songs but do not use echolocation. Some examples include blue whales, fin whales, bowheads, and other smaller whales. The other group of whales are called tooth whales. Their teeth are generally either like pegs or like fangs. They use echolocation to navigate their way around the ocean. This means that whales produce sound waves through the use of their nasal passages, and then use the echoes to find their way. They do not use their sight for navigation or for hunting. Some examples of such whales include beluga, narwhals, sperm whales, pilot whales, beaked whales, and also dolphins and porpoises. About 33 years ago, a paleontologist named Phil Gingerish found a 52 million year old skull in Pakistan that resembled that of a wolf-sized carnivore called creodons, which lived in the early Eocene epoch, which was about 55 million to 34 million years ago. This skull and the archaeocedes had similar characteristics, thus proving a relationship between whales and land animals called creodons. Archaeocedes are the world's oldest whales, yet they have some characteristics that modern whales do not possess. Archaeocedes, however, have many characteristics that are similar to land animals. For example, they have teeth that come in many different types. However, modern whales either lack teeth or have teeth practically identical in both shape and size. Archaeocetes' nostrils were located near the top of the nose, like in terrestrial animals, while modern whales' nostrils are in the form of a blowhole on the top of their head. Echolocation is another characteristic that separates ancient whales from modern tooth whales. Let's travel back in time to about 52 million years ago when a group of creatures called the Pachycetus lived. They are the earliest known and well-preserved cetacean. They were about the size of a wolf, but they did not look anything like a whale, but rather more like a large dog with a long, thick tail. The fossils of Pachycetus showed an ear region. This was the connection between terrestrial and aquatic species. Their ears were similar to those of modern whales. Their head shape was also similar to that of a modern whale, although the overall body was not similar. Scientists believe that the Pachycetus hunted in and lived by bodies of water. In addition, 
Their fossils were more proof of the relationship between the whales and hippos, because both are artiodactyls. A recently discovered amblocetus skeleton was found in Pakistan. It is 50 million years old. It resembles a crocodile, and it was amphibious, which means that its back legs are better for swimming than for walking. It most likely swam by undulating its back vertically. Still, this animal could prove successfully both on land and in water. It also had fingers and hooves. In addition, it has ears like modern whales, but no blowhole. They most likely lived in near-shore environments and went to shore to give birth. It heard sound through its lower jaw and the soft tissues in the ear. Remington seeds were related to Amblocetes and lived in a similar time. They lived by hunting for fish. Protocetids were better adapted for water and thus had a very aquatic lifestyle. They lived about 45 million years ago. One example is the Rhodiocetus. They had flukes or horizontal bars on their tails, which allowed them to swim faster. They had a shorter and more stable neck, which was ideal for swimming. The ear region was also adapted for underwater hearing. The legs and pelvis are disconnected, which showed the transition from land to water existence. They also had hind legs and lived in shallow areas, so they may have had a similar lifestyle, similar to that of seals or of dolphins. The discovery of Mesionychids was proof that whales had land-based ancestors. Mesionychids were an extinct mammal that lived between 60 and 30 million years ago. They were meat-eating hoofed animals. They had unusual triangular teeth, and whales are the only other animal that have teeth similar to those. Thus, scientists believe that whales evolved from the form of Mesionychids. Scientists studying DNA and set of fossils found that whale DNA was similar to hypopomatids. Genetic research also proves that the hoofed animals and whales were indeed related. In 1840 in Egypt, the first fossil evidence of early whales was found. It was a fossil of Basilosaurus, which was a 40 million year old animal. They were up to 18 meters long. They had a whale-like appearance, but also had tiny hind legs that were useless. Even though it had weak hind legs and could not walk on land, it was proof that it had a land-based origin. Basilosaurus was a fully marine animal. It had robust flippers and a long, flexible body. All these species share some characteristics of whales, although none of them are direct ancestors of whales. The fossils of these species show the transition from land to water. Durodontids lived at the same time, but were only about 5 meters long. They looked a lot like modern whales. Their nostrils were also moved closer towards the top of the head. Their ear bones suggest that they could hear while underwater. Their forelimbs have practically become flippers for paddling. Because the pelvis is detached from the spinal column, it provides more movement from the tail. However, both basilosaurids and durodontids lack the organ that allows modern whales to sing and use ultrasound. They also had smaller brains than what modern whales have today. Let's briefly wrap up this amazing evolution of whales. The most recent discoveries in Pakistan and India help us provide more information about the earliest whales. These recent discoveries help us understand how these animals could look like Basilosaurus. However, there are still gaps in the fossil record that help us understand whale evolution. For instance, how the blowhole came about. There is evidence establishing a relationship between hoofed mammals and modern-day whales with fins. Most of the discoveries have been because there have been similarities in the ear structure. The most important message is that there is clear proof that mammals were once land-living mammals that adapted to an aquatic life for reasons like food and safety from predators. Now next time you're whale watching or vacationing in SeaWorld, remember that those whales' ancestors were once walking and living on land.